James Allen Grandy, my father Walter N. Grandy, had served on the USS Bakuna 319. He actually uh, served on board this boat many years ago, and uh, he was an engineman. Okay, here we are boarding one of the other ships, the Olympia, right here. We're with Alan Grandy. Okay, check it out. I'm over here with Alan Grandy. We're on the Olympia. That's one of the wooden ships, right? Right, attached to it. Hmm. So uh, in a little while, we just met with Patrick, and Patrick's gonna, you know, he's gonna meet with Al, and Al has the uniform here in the bag, and his father served on the Bakuna, right? USS Bakuna, Bakuna 319. Right. So uh, we'll be just waiting for him to come back. Here he is, Patrick. So Greg is gonna be here in a minute. Okay, all right. Thanks for meeting with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, well, thanks, for, for, thanks for coming down and bringing bring, bring us. Uh, oh, there you go. You got the yeah. uh, the wood. Yeah, the uh, the name the name board there. That's something that uh, the sub got last year for his seventy fifth anniversary. The, hmm. the wood one. Yeah, the wood one. Yep, yep. Hmm. So um, so with wood work like that, that's varnished and supposed to be kept outside. Uh, every year, uh, you're supposed to bring it in and just do you know like do like a scuff down and then and then right, recoat right, with varnish. Right, right. Yeah. Tico, right? If it was oil, the shine. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then these panels here, these are for uh, Skylight on the quarter deck for, for, for Olympia. Okay. What's that? The, the after deck. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, so, so the after deck back there, where, which has the, mm -hmm. the cap stand, is probably the most open deck space that we have on the ship outside. Mm -hmm. um, and we use it for a lot of events and things like that. And so we're going to do some safety upgrades for it so that we can, mm -hmm. um, you know, improve, you know, improve the... Um, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the guard around the deck. Right, you know? right. So, and that's and that's actually what you see here. This is actually what uh, this is actually how we're fitting um, mm -hmm. new stanchions bolted onto the originals. So mm -hmm. you're not changing anything anything of the historic ship. Just you know, just adding mm -hmm. a little bit of you know extra extra barrier. Right. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. Is this the submarine right here? The yep. Schematics? Um, Right here, right here. So, so we have these schematics here. This is a this is Olympia in our current and World War One configuration, and then Bakuna is right here. Oh, that's okay. All right. Yeah. And it became a a museum, or it got Could decommissioned. You, uh, explain to them a little bit. A little yeah. bit. Yes. About the Bakuna that they came down here it was. Decommissioned and then it became a museum. Yeah, so, Baku so Bakuna, I know uh, she was decommissioned in 1969 right. uh, and she was kept up at the Philadelphia Navy Yard until 1976. Right. 76, I believe. Uh, she did have a dry dock in around 1970. Um, mm. Got some photos of that. And um, then, then uh, I think Bakuna was brought down to Penn's Landing first. Um, and then Olympia was brought alongside Bakuna um, in 19, well, on like July 2nd, I think it was, 1976, so right before the bicentennial. That's part of a prep for that. Okay. So, yeah. Now people have been coming here and they've been coming on the submarine and they give tours yep. and stuff? So, I mean, so that's one of the, that's one of the neat, neat things about these ships is that they've been open since, you know, since that time, you know, right here at Penn's Landing. Right. So, um, so, yeah, so we're, we're, we're like one of the oldest continuously operating, you know, museum ships. Yeah, so Olympia's been open to the public since 1958. So there's actually yeah. just saw uh, just the two ships here, the the submarine and the other one is the is this Olympia. one yeah. you're on right yeah. now. Yeah, so this is great. Thank you. Hey, hey, yeah. good morning. Good morning. Hey. How are you? <laughs> My name's Phil, and that's you know Al. Hey, Al. Okay, we're here with Greg. Greg, you're with the. I'm with the museum. Yeah. Museum, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I take care of the Bakuna. So oh, I'm okay. And I handle most of the stuff like this when, when folks donate stuff relevant to the boat. Okay. Is this the first uh, time that somebody brought one of the uniforms here, or is, is like you know, not the first time? But this, your dad's uniform is going to be the first complete uniform that we have. We have bits and pieces of other uniforms. Right. But this will be the first, like the whole thing came from one guy. Yeah. 
Wow, it's pretty exciting the, uh, to have uh, on the boat. All right, thank you. All right, so Al's got the layout. Oh, it's great. Great. I would like to present my father in a certain way. Sure. Yeah. Wow, you must have been working on this for a while, huh? Yeah. What is the other? Yeah. Well, this is a big... Ah, <laughs> oh, that's great. Look at that. Look at that, that's man. Fantastic. This is a history of my father's records. Mm -hmm. He actually served, this is when he was in school, high school, so this was his Brewster when he was in high school. So he was going to, uh, when he graduated, he did not graduate high school, he further education down the road through the Navy okay. with the GED. So he also served um, on the next one in the United States. Um, <coughs> excuse me, served in the United States uh, um, Army, Connecticut National Guard. Right. And then mm -hmm. he also served, that's a, another copy of that. He was a cannoneer. This here was his qualifications um, that the Navy did as far as. Um, mm -hmm. Is GED. Right, that was. Okay. And that school. was his submarine school qualifications. Mm -hmm. Very good. 56. This was on board. So was Bakuna his first boat or? Uh, I believe so. That was his qualifications. These are all copies that I have the original at home. I think I know who that is. Not really. It's, uh, his name is Frank Wilmans. They actually have a uh, photo. He, he donated a really big, pretty big uh, photograph collection for the museum. Oh, wow. I haven't seen him in a couple of years, though, but I met him once. Right. But he was on the boat from 49 to. He was on the boat for a long time. Was the back side of that. Okay, so this is the back side of that? Yes.
and uh, it was Captain Webb who was his captain on board. Okay. Hmm. I thought this would be interesting. The original at home. It's on board. Okay, so he was on the boat first and then he got it? Right. Okay. Right. Because it had the letterhead from the before. So he must have come on the boat before 58 then. I forget the actual, um, I have um, those documents there, the second one. And what happened was from the, the uh, learning of uh, going for his high school GED, um, on board he was a brotherhood as well as everybody on board. Um, he was fond of one of the people that helped him, uh, which was uh, one of the radio men, Calvin was his name and he became friends with him and um, he told him um, he helped him with his GED to get through to to get those qualifications as well but I, I do know um, when my father had gotten sick um, I know it was a very interesting part in my life as well because I learned a lot on his history but I thought it was very interesting from what I learned when my father had his first stroke in 2014 and a week later, another stroke simultaneously with a heart attack. And he first was in the IC unit in, in one of the hospitals in St. Allen. And when I was trying to have a conversation with him, I found it very interesting because he was doing tapping and communicating with me almost as Morse code. And I felt that unbelievably intelligent. <laughs> So, you know, it's all part of the, my, my dad and his qualifications that I've learned and actually rolled into my own life as, as things that I was involved in. Just understanding what people do to uh, secure and, and, and take care of the United States. This, one, this particular one, my dad did the drawing on of the submarine boat. He was he this for his qualifications or was this afterwards? This was many years afterwards. Okay. He, he, he drew all this from memory. Pretty good. Memory, you know, so he drew all that, and that's my dad right there uh, in, in the uniform on a Christmas. This is when he was up at the Eiffel Tower. Okay, um, here is a, a letter received from former Congressman Dan Donovan. Mm -hmm. Former Congressman Dan Donovan, which explains, because we were looking into the good metal, conduct metal. So he further looked into his service. That's great. And then here are some photographs on board. Wow. Book. These were photographs when my dad was in overseas mm -hmm. doing different things that had nothing to do about mm -hmm. you. Oh. <laughs> right, these are. Uh, like Carlo. So you gotta <laughs> use judgment. So. Thank you, the, these here is. So. Mm -hmm. um, if you read the encaptions, because my, my dad wrote yeah. all these. Wow. <laughs> he fell off the gangplank. <laughs> mm -hmm. He wrote, it, quite my, character. my father made this book, and all the pictures are the original pictures from what I had saved. He made all these. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Very good. It's Captain Webb. You really cool documented the, really a lot. Seeing the yeah, captain huh? play yeah. cards with an enlisted man is pretty cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so each picture uh, represents different places. Yeah, Holland. Holland. There's a two page, I think, on it. They're in, I think, in the radio room, that one. 
No, that's control. Coach control. Like, yeah, this is the hydraulic manifold. These were all the, the people he served on, I wow. think, with. I think they're on Liberty. Amazing. He had yeah, a lot of document, a lot of pictures. Like he captured a lot of that. That's yeah. good. The pictures are what we, we like, mm -hmm. to, like to see. see. Right, that's what I thought. These are the original pictures he made all this. So um, that's him swimming, I think. St. Thomas. Were you really there? Oh, wow. Looks like there's a photo. Yeah, there was one there. Just portraying when I started looking at the individuals, it's how we saw them. So these are all people he served with? I guess. I was trying to figure that out. I, it's like a guy from the Addis, right? Mm -hmm. As you can read the inscriptions. That one, they, that particular one, they, they, they tied me to that one. And as you can read the inscriptions on the bottom, they would tie meat and actually throw it out for the sharks and do target practice to make sure their weapons uh, will, will fire. And that's my dad right there on a rant. One, um, there's Captain Webb, yeah. right? And then this is the particular one where they went swimming um, in, in, in the water. And then there was, there was a, a person on board for Shark Watch, in case of any shark mm -hmm. game. And you can see him back there too. Right. Um, one of the admirals coming on board. And then, um, if I remember right, my father was saying they had an inspection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And then, then uh, he actually came in the engine room. He wore whites on a diesel boat. That's pretty yeah, random. Yeah, he, he he was checking the engine room for for on inspection. The person that photographed this and gave him the picture, I believe. That's how that went. Monica, huh? to America. Right. Um, my dad played a major role in when he played on board. Mm -hmm. So these pictures are historical for each person that served as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic. You know, okay That's great. Fantastic. Well, this would the, this this the, this will be a really 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 helpful. The, the other thing, like on the back end, like I was just mentioning, is a few mm -hmm. photographs from my father when he was with Texaco and everything else. That's. That's okay as well. Right. You have right. Right. Um, this here was another book. Okay. Um, that this here was added to qualifications. Um, that's a, I believe, a picture of. That's a, just make out the three new things. Mm -hmm. Is it on there? Yeah, you can just see it right there. Okay. Mm. But this particular book um, illustrates uh, a lot of things from, if you give me a moment, one second. Mm -hmm. I'd actually have to find it. Third was the one, you know, in the Navy. Mm -hmm. um, Where is he? Right here. Mm. Walter Nicholas Grandy, right? And then um, there's two pitches, several pitches that I, I know he's in. Oh, there he is over here. Which one is he? He's is this, this, this particular guy? person, third. Third guy? Uh -huh. And then there was another picture. That's that swimming. Right? Let me see the the, the the book. Hold the book up to you know the, the front of it. Let me see what it looks like. It's like a yearbook, right? Yeah. All right. So what what is this like a yearbook? All the like if you were on the ship, you can get one of these. No, this is from his time at boot camp. 
Oh, okay. Uh, United States Naval Training Center in Cambridge, Maryland. So this is his, his boot camp. Okay. It's in 1955. So it's before the connection to the submarine? Yeah, before you that. go on here That's first, right. and then the sub school, and then to the boat. Okay. Having you know, this I stuff think. is very historic, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't, don't have, have too many people. Time frame? No, because post-war, it's all technically classified, World War, you know, Cold War stuff, and then right. those guys had it beaten into them, don't talk about it. So, right, right, yeah. right. It's right. usually, if it, you know, every once in a while we'll come with a guy who will be on it, and I'll get him to talk about it, but most of the time it's it's family members, they're, you know, they passed away, and their family members are bringing, bringing the stuff bring back to us. Mm -hmm. This was another thing. That is, this period is very hard to find people to come and, you know, coming down here, it's like yeah. a... Because stuff. when you think about it, people yeah. think of submarines, they think either World War II or they think nuclear boats. They don't. Right. They don't really talk about what happened in between the two. Right. That's what your dad was. That was the period of time your dad was in. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so it's a magazine-like type deal. Yeah, like you know, cool mechanics or whatever. It's a magazine the Navy gives yeah. out. Yeah. So he was an engineer from what year? You remember? It was uh, well, it's all documented right there on yeah, the time. Yeah, like he got, he got his, uh, his, he was a far fireman up until like the late 58, and then he got officially promoted to engine in third class. Right, mm. he just read his records on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm good at yeah. records. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Patrick and Greg. That's and right. Yeah. And Alan, right here, and looking over the records from, uh, Alan's dad, who served on the Bakuna. Bakuna 319. Yeah. Submarine. We're, we're standing on a historical uh, ship as well, called the Olympia. Right. Which, so, is, atta which is attached to the boat. Radar. Mm -hmm. I brought all these items in here. So what do you got here? What is this, Sal? Uh, this is uh, uh, the uniform that my father had passed down and was, when he was still alive, he spoke about it. This is his actual uniform that he served in. Um, when you look at different pictures, there was also on this one here, this particular picture is the uniform Show me. Yeah. of when he served on, and also, they also wore white. They also wore white. Mm. So, this is the uniform in this picture that he served on. I, I took off the metal that was on there, um, which was his dolphins. Yep. Okay. What do they call this uniform? The proper terminology of the blue, what is it, the, so the dark? His, his dress blues. Yeah. Dress, dress blues. blues. Right. This is the front. Wow. A cup of steam. Like you can still see where dolphins were. I, I just there. recently took it on. Wow. Oh. This is. This is Cracker Jacks. Briefly about the history, and one it's of the gentlemen was doing a tour mm -hmm. on board. And here, here is the video. Mm. This is the actual video of your father being on the ship itself on the boat to the tour, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, That's him speaking. Why the people think the people, the, the people he, were there? Right? I, I was trying to get to Phil. Uh, hit it again. Hit the Hold middle on. of the picture. It'll go full screen. You should. How do we go full screen? This one. Yeah, hit the middle. This. Oh, so it's it's a small small right? Here, maybe turn it. Maybe flip is it on, on Facebook? Yeah, it's on. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's a little bigger there. They shot it which, that way. Which, this Here, way? just hold it there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah, okay. 
That's what I want to tie down. Now you were this tall when you were on the ship, right? Yeah, but I wasn't, I wasn't as wide, you know. <laughs> and it's a wood carved piece. Um, and one of the, the people that I, I found out um, through on, on, on a website, I forget how I should navigate it, mm -hmm. but he, he was somewhere related to somebody that served on board. I don't okay. remember exactly who. I could find out exactly all the particulars. So, because mm. um, I looked at this and he made this for me. Okay. So, um, I have that at home as well. Okay. You okay. Know, it's just part of like my father's history, what right. he was involved in. Right. You know, um, I also have the patch at home. Oh, wow. You know, the patch that was on his, mm -hmm. so he had so yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. I have that patch at home. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure what to give and what not to give and what was acceptable and not acceptable. Well, generally, I mean, it's it's really any, anything anything that you have that really kind of illustrates his story and the story of, you know, basically what the crew is doing aboard is. Well, is, that, that, that was the most important. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like the cliche, my dad's coming home in a different way, mm -hmm. um, just like everybody else who served. And that's, yeah. to me, it was very important yeah. to shed his, um, um, to explain his story yeah. amongst all the other people that served yeah. with him. Yeah. And um, first-hand knowledge is, is, is what I'm trying to provide as far as what my dad had explained from, from him to me. Right, 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 right. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm just relaying it to you. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, so I'm trying to do my best as far mm -hmm. as preserve everything that he had explained to me. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. which is great, which is great. And you know, the more stories that we get like this, the more they can stay together. Yeah, you know, you know so it, it's, it's all part of that whole history thing. And I learned, like I was saying before, I was a September 11 first responder. Mm -hmm. And I'm also involved with the museum mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. Well. I'm logged in with the museum as okay. well. So um, there's a whole thing of what they did as far as uh, you mm -hmm. can log on their site and actually mm -hmm. get into um, mm -hmm. Specifics what everybody was involved in, stuff right. like that. But that's the technology we're in today. Mm -hmm. You know, looking back on what you were just explaining about to, to having this era of, of pictures and, and, and uniforms, it, it just shows quality people. Yeah. You, you know, when you look back on how many people in the United States can say they served on a submarine. Mm -hmm. And then you put it into how many states to put it mm -hmm. into how many people from each mm -hmm. state is each state mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Right. That's just my mm -hmm. own take on it. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that's just my father always said. You know, mm -hmm. act to the best. Yeah. You know, always. Yeah. You know, tell, tell it the way it is. You know, and it's yeah. just how it is. Yeah. You know, so uh, I'm okay with uh, releasing all his stuff, and um, for my father. Um, Again, it's kind of like a part of him is coming home where he mm -hmm. always spoke extremely highly of a lot of people he started with. Wow. Wow. You know, that's wow. just doing my part. Wow. Well. well, then, um, what I'm going to do is I have something for you to sign. Now, what I will also do, since, uh, since um, I wasn't really expecting more than the uniform, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have you sign and then I'm going to send you a updated copy with okay. that's going to include everything okay. that you brought with us today. So you could just sign right here. Um, he had to go to LaGuardia Airport mm -hmm. and uh, President uh, Kennedy was coming in. So he had to, uh, uh, to, to go and see President Kennedy and he met him and so forth. And then years later, um, which had nothing to do with my father mm -hmm. um, or any of his stuff, I actually met First Lady Kennedy. Oh, wow. I was doing plumber work up in, in a uh, restaurant. I was doing a five-star mm -hmm. restaurant in Manhattan. And uh, we were waiting for her, Barbetta's restaurant, mm -hmm. we were waiting for her to uh, come to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. We were doing the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing some work outside, some drainage work outside, mm -hmm. and a car pulled up. And she stepped out of the car right in front of me. Wow. And I was talking to her a few minutes, and then she walked right into the restaurant. So, you know, when you see the history, uh, there's a lot of history with my father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm extremely grateful. My mother's extremely, my, and also to speak about my mother, mm -hmm. um, when my father was on board, um, at one point they called the Dependence Day, which is the family dependence can come. 
So my father actually had the, uh, um, my mother visited my father. Mm -hmm. And in his time frame, as, as weird as this is going to sound, um, my, ma my mother was on board as a female mm -hmm. on board, which it was all men. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that same era, which is touching all on that, my mother went out and she's in one of those pictures as well on my Facebook page. Oh, wow. She is the woman on board that one particular picture. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's my mother. Oh wow, fantastic. Yeah, so fantastic. she was she was gonna come today, but uh, she she really wasn't up to par for it. Yeah. 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 yeah so okay. yeah, that's this, is this is fine. So um so mm -hmm. so one thing that I also want to you know, make sure that you guys are aware of mm -hmm. is that we do also have for our um, collections department is we do have an online catalog. And at some point Everything that you've given us today is going to be made available on our online catalog, so anybody can go on there right. and see your dad's things. Oh, thank you, thank yeah. you, yeah. thank you. It's, yeah. it's, it's it, it, he's just one part of mm. the picture. Which, yeah. um My dad always said to me, you, you know, he's just one person of the whole mm -hmm. submarine. Right. You, you know, that many people he served with, which. Uh, um, whether they hear or they perish, mm -hmm. it's the stories that you can explain yeah. that people, will, you know, in the time frame yeah. that they were in. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's important. That was important to my father. Yeah. Because everybody played a, 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 a tremendous role mm -hmm. on board. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he always wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, that's that's how it was. Right. But, right. That's it. So, yeah. There you go. I'll give you a little light. <laughs> Here we go, going down into the submarine. Wow, look at this. Wow, we're in the belly, right? Yeah. What would yeah. they call this? This is the forward torpedo room. So this is the video your dad said his, his bunk was one, his first bunk was one of his. Yes, we have a few missing too. He was in uh, over by the bathroom. Yeah, but he said his first bunk, when he first came on board the boat, was up in here. Right. And then he got bunked back there. Right, so right. Oh, there's right. an actual bunk up here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. This is what, the torpedo room? Yeah, this is the forward torpedo forward. room. And they got bunks to pull out down here, too. So yeah, the torpedo's right, right there. Either a torpedo man or a non-qualified non submarine sailor, and you'd sleep here. Hmm. Above the torpedoes. Yeah. Well, it's, well, we it's, found his bunk. You know which one, you know where the area is? Yeah, they we'll, put the bunk? we'll get there. Okay, cool. Those are the torpedoes, where, where the torpedoes go. Wow. Tubes. Yep. So there's six tubes up here, so you can see down there there's two more. And this is the torpedo. This is it, right the there. Oh, this is a mock. This one's fake. <laughs> the real, real one's back out. And what was the year was this uh, submarine made in? 1944. 1944? Yep. So it was right after the war, uh, during World the, War II. During the war. Oh, during the war, yeah. actually. War, World War II didn't end until 45. 45, okay. Escape trunk. What's this called? This is escape, escape trunk. trunk. This goes all the way to the top, the yep. ship, right? It goes over the boat, to the actually. Boat. It's called a boat, never a ship, right? <laughs> when you were when we were at topside, you'll right. see a, a red... You're not anonymous anymore. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're, you know I love this. <laughs> I know you do. Uh, when, you're, you when you're, when you're topside, uh, uh, you'll see a, a a big red looks like a bathtub and that's an escape buoy and it goes to the surface mm -hmm. and there's a cable to it so when you leave the escape trunk you hold on to the cable and you do what's called blow and go you blow out all the air out of your lungs and keep blowing until you pop up to the surface like a cork right. wow and you keep yourself alive what's the uh, what would be the depth on that how far they could actually go on that do you, do you to do that yeah, because I, I know what I know that yeah. that was a, uh, a requirement um, in the towers. Yeah. Yeah, in, in in Groton they had a tower that was 120 some odd feet. I didn't know the actual footage. I was and, just uh, curious. You know, it's just that's. Man, they said this, this is only good for 100 feet. I think that's how long the cable for the boat is. If you look down there, yeah. the torpedoes. There's a bank of tubes at the below this right. deck. So that's when he's talking about like there's a sub area, yeah. sub level. There's four. There's four. The uh, shoots right there. And there's two more. There's there's six total. You okay. can see. The two. Yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. See? The two are uh -huh. further down. You see. 
Okay. Right. So even you just flying through here. So this is off. <laughs> so this is off, this is where officers would spend would sleep. This is the wardroom. So they eat and, and spend their free time in here. And then you got the pantry there. Pantries for food pantry storage. Right, yeah. All even officers. All the food is still prepped back at the galley. So we'll, we'll see that when we get there. You got a shower there. You know, shower. Is, look at that. There you go. This is junior officer. Hope it still works. <laughs> uh, don't still work. We, don't, we don't have any water on board, thankfully. What is outside? So These are bunks. So how many men were on this uh, boat? Total complement was 80. 80, so 80, 80 guys total, 8 were officers, and then uh, you have 5 chief petty officers, and the rest were all enlisted. Okay. This is senior officers, and this is the captain's stateroom. So at least this part in here is a little higher, you know? Because the guys, if they were over 6 feet tall, you wouldn't want them hitting their heads all the time, right? Look at this, look how wide this is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't be as tall because if they're getting ready to go on deployment, right. they'll store a lot of their food on the deck. Mm -hmm. So you'd be a little higher. And the guys were a little skinnier than back in the <laughs> What's that? In the 18, 19, right? Yep. <laughs> you don't have that width there. Yeah. We have that width now. <laughs> right. Wow. And then here, office. Office. Look at the typewriter. Mm. The control room and what what's the of the control room? This would be where you drive it. This is where the this is where you dive. So the helm, the main helm is up in the con tower of the ladder here. That's okay. where the periscopes are as well, radar center, that kind of stuff. Down here, you've got the dive plants here, which control the angle of the boat as you, run, as you go down or come up. So that's how you adjust your depth. A hydraulic manifold there. Uh, the, bow, the bow planes. He was on yeah. the bow planes. So, okay. bow, yeah, bow planes. so guys would be turning these levers to make the boat go up and down, right? Yeah, so yeah. when you dive, you use yeah. these the wheels here to, to adjust the angle of the boat in the water when you hit your desired depth and you level off again. Wow. And then how would they communicate it? Right here? Inside this part? This? Or they would communicate from up there, down here? Let's say. Yeah, so the captain's going to be up yeah. there. Whoever's conning the boat's up in the conning tower, and he's okay. the one that's telling them make your depth, you know, like such and such, whatever. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> and then, and then there's and then, a phone then, right there. The, like the diving a... officer who's down here okay. handles the evolution. Yeah, now, what, what's that called? That that would be how they communicate? This, this no, is a sound powered okay. phone. So this is this is like essentially if you take two cans and run a string through them, that's basically how this functions. So it doesn't require electricity to operate. So if the boat loses power, you can still communicate between the departments or compartments. Mm -hmm. And then this is the one MC. This is where he gets on, and you hear it across the whole boat. Oh, okay. So when so when your father was on the bow, yeah. there would have been a guy to his left on the stern. Behind him would be the diving officer mm -hmm. and where your friend here is standing that's right. where the chief of the watch would be doing what you in your dad drew when he said the christmas tree right that's the christmas tree right here that mm -hmm. shows okay. what's open what's closed right. the christmas tree's all lit up that's why it's called the christmas tree i guess yeah, right yeah because <laughs> yeah, it's red and green lights well oh, thank those. you this is great this is really so what's behind here? It goes even further? Oh, really? Wow, okay. And then you can get to the top two up, up there through down there too? Yeah. Well, uh, oh, trying to fit through. Wow. <laughs> Sucking it in. Think about doing it in a hurry. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Wow, here's the galley. Yeah, the right, right, there. right here. That's the food. And then, wow, look at this. Mess is here. My father used to tell me, he said, they ate, they ate the best. Yeah. They ate the best. There was spare no expense. They mm -hmm. ate the best, and just how it was. What do you get, what do you get of, a one cow? One of the incentives <laughs> for, for joining submarines, because submarine service is voluntary. So if you join the Navy, you'll never be assigned to a submarine. Yeah. So one of the incentives is better pay and better food. Yeah, better food. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. behind Greg is the most important mm -hmm. piece of equipment on a submarine. Coffee. Yes. Coffee. I thought it would be like the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I've, been on, I've been on a boat with rations, mm. and as long as we had coffee, we'd stay out. Right. The moment right. we were running low on coffee, that's when we decided we were heading back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you've fallen many a times, probably was yeah. over here. Huh? He was telling me a story about one of the guys that he worked with um, was drinking and fell down. 
shit, you would have fallen down. <laughs> he, 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 he fell down and um, he had like a little mishap going on because he was, he was drinking and, and he was just telling me about a short story about it one time, you know. But um, because the ladder we came down, the ladder we'll exit out of was originally the torpedo loading hatch, so the crew would have to go up and down this ladder here. Right, 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 right. Now, on modern submarines, the ladder coming in, mm -hmm. the executive officer office is right next to it. Mm -hmm. So, if you're making too much noise, the man who was in charge of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, justice mm -hmm. was the one who heard. <laughs> oh. well, these are the beds. These are the beds. I don't, so these, I don't think these were here when you visited last. No, time. no, he did say that it was. It was um, a lot more, and this was wide open. Yeah. This was wide open. These, these racks here, and he, that was his bed over there. This one was his bed? Yeah. Which one? Of them? Show me. Right there. Move down a little there. Was it, we could see. He said, he said bottom middle, didn't he? No, not that one. Not that one? Over here. Over here. Which one? There? Because he does, he, he, he actually. This one? Yeah, I believe so. The middle so. one? I believe so. so. Ah, that's good. I believe that was it. Not the lower one. I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe that was it. So this is the original max from the. So these these are the ones that are these are the newer. Yeah. But these are original because there there was two tier I believe not three I don't remember. This these were added right. No, these got taken out when she became a museum. Mm. But there would have been a middle row just like this. The last time you were here, there wasn't a middle row. There was nothing here. Right, but right. We re that re I do re remember. We restored the, the the space to make it look more like it would have. Because I remember when he was doing when we were speaking, he actually mm. kne he kneeled down and he bent down like on on like this, and I thought that's that was this one. Either yeah. this one, I, I thought it was this one. It yeah, could be that. This one, this one probably wasn't there last so, time either. No. Anything with like with the green matches like this is is new. That's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't appear. That appeared to be because he said the second. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Right now you're in the forward engine room. Okay. There's the back engine room too. There's an aft one. Oh, There's right. after bus. Wow, right All right. Yeah. yeah. This is the engine room for your dad would have This is where my father would have been right here in this area. Okay. Also, there, that was where the fresh water was made, right? Yeah. So those right there. On those yeah. tanks. Oh, so they take the salt water and they make uh, fresh water? Fresh water. For what, drinking or everything? Well, first you have, you've got uh, water for the battery, then you've got for engineering spaces, then cooking, and then everything else. Okay. And they would make that right the here? Cr the crew was... And those tanks the right there? These are the two stills. Okay. Thank you. Bring seawater in and then actually change it to fresh water. Right. Seawater and you evaporate it, leaves the salt behind, and then you recondense the steam and it comes from fresh water. Right. There you go. Room after engine room. So each engine room has two engines. They're General Motors V16s, 16 cylinder, 16 on horsepower. And uh, the, boat, the engines themselves don't actually drive the speed of the boat, but they're connected to electric generators, which are the boxes back there. It creates electrical power. Power from that goes to either the batteries for charging or straight to our motors for uh, propulsion. These are diesel. These are before uh, they became nuclear, let's say, yeah. after that. Yeah, so today. We couldn't, we're diesel electric propulsion. So these are like the beginning days of submarines, right? They made them like this, pretty much. Yeah. About 50 years of, of development by this point, but yeah, the engines don't change much. Mm. Yeah, the first American submarine was 1900. So we think technically it was 1776. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a wood. <laughs> yeah, Captain Crunch was on that. At, 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 yeah, at, at least he didn't go to the Humley. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's the early ones were either steam or diesel or gasoline. Think about that. Yeah, it was gasoline. Yeah. I don't think it was ever. It was never steam. There was one that was a pedal. The 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 man. It was like yeah, foot. Yeah, the, the first last, one. That was, was the Hunley. What was, was the, uh, the max? <laughs> yeah. What was the maximum speed they could do above and above? So when your dad was aboard, because the, yeah. the numbers changed a little bit. As she was first built, she was actually faster on the surface than she was faster on the water. Surface. Yeah, so during World War II when the subs were built, they're better off, you're better off thinking of those kind of submarines as surface ships that could dive. So on the surface, we could do about 20 knots. Submerged max speed was only about 9. Uh, 
When your dad was aboard because of the guppy modifications and things they had done to change the structure of the hull to make it more hydrodynamic, uh, submerged speed actually jumped to about 15 knots and surface speed jumped or dropped to about 17. I think today submarines, they're actually, because the way that the hull is that teardrop shape, they're actually faster under the water today than they're on the surface. So I think, I don't know, Virginia is like, from what they release publicly at least. Publicly they'll say 30, 30 knots, I think. They're, they're fa you know, officially they're faster than 20, but they're right. significantly faster. No, 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 that, yeah. that I understand, but I'm saying as far as like basic kind of knowledge, yeah. you, 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 you know, versus the actual. Yeah. You, you, you know, so I know my, my dad talked about sometimes the waves, when they would come out, when the, when the boat comes out of the water, and then lands into waves where the ocean was tremendous on the waves. You know, when they when they hit above with the waves, was it better to be with the waves above or below? Because you couldn't surface, right? It, it kind of depends. Like, so the submarine is so small that like, if you're on the surface, you're gonna feel it because you're you're just a cork in a hurricane. But at least for diesel boats. The Navy had operational standards where that if you got caught in a hurricane, you had to be on the surface. So you had to be on the surface. Yeah, and that, that was because with the batteries, if you sloshed to one way or the other, even if you're under the water, you know, you could start a fire. And being on the surface already, you know, kind of... Because they had to endure all those massive waves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. during the war, like for World War II, we have a couple of records, not necessarily of Bakuna, but of other of boats that would just submerge to they, get rid of it. But. This particular boat, the Bakuna, was in World War II. Yeah. So it's seen action. It's seen yeah, action. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did she sink anybody? Did she have three to shoot out ships. to three and a half ships? Three this was in uh, Pearl wow. Harbor, right? Pearl Harbor, it, it was in, yeah, so in that first, area. Her first World Patrol left from Pearl Harbor. Her second and third World Patrols Second and third left out of Fremantle, yeah. Australia. Her fourth fourth war patrol left out of the Philippines, and the fifth left out of Fremantle. And then she came. She was back in the states. So Japan surrendered in August. Bakuna was back in the states in San Diego by September. So, uh, so, so as far as a historical point, getting back to Pearl Harbor, it was in Pearl Harbor. Yeah, in 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 the, in the harbor. In the fight. Not, 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 not on December 7th. Not on December 7th. Not on the event. But, but Pearl Harbor is a major submarine base. Oh, all right. So Correct. Bakuna... Correct. Bakuna Correct. Was, okay. Yeah, okay. so Bakuna was launched in, in uh, May of 1944. So it wasn't in that specific time in the war itself? No, not 1941. Oh, okay. so she was launched in 1944 uh, in Connecticut, up the, the, the oh, Electric right. Boat Company okay. up there. She came around, uh, sailed to the Panama Canal, made it to Pearl Harbor, uh, did some training stuff there, and then she left from her first war patrol from Pearl Harbor, which I think was like September of 1944. So she had to shoot our torpedoes during World War II, and and shot and uh, actually shot down, uh, whatever, destroyed what? Uh, which boat was that? Did they destroy? We reliably, we, we tell her, we say reliably three and a half ships. <laughs> yeah. So so if you read the patrol reports. They made five attacks and, and had good hits, but they couldn't corroborate the sinkings mm -hmm. because the way the, the Navy, you know, the Navy wanted right. to make sure things lined up. The problem with that was is that they used Japanese records to corroborate. So if the Japanese said we lost the ship here, then they could say match it up and say yes, yeah. the submarine was there. The problem is the Japanese didn't keep very good records, and so oftentimes actual sinkings got erased because of that. Mm -hmm. and so we can reliably say that Bakuna sunk three and a half ships, and the half credit comes from the fact that we damaged a tanker. Then another submarine actually sank it, so we got a half credit for that. Okay. Had this uh, ship ever been hit with anything or a fire on yeah. board? Yeah. Wow. She's had several several incidents over the years. During the war, she was depth charged a number of times. It, basically, every attack she made ended up in a depth charging. Wow. Uh, but nothing serious, obviously, because yeah, yeah. she's still here. Uh, the one incident we do know about was after your father. It was in 1965. Uh, the main induction, which is the, the ventilation pipe that runs basically from the back of the sail down the length of the boat mm -hmm. uh, cracked and they started taking on water and wow. the, the, so the forward engine room started flooding with water so they had the emergency service for that wow. so yeah. so that cracked them yeah so the main induction is a three foot diameter pipe it's responsible to that sound you hear right now yeah that's the blowers going that brings sucks air, air. Yeah, sucks air fresh air into the boat so that right. that pipe cracked they were taking on water in the fore I think it was the forward engine room. 
Yeah. Uh, at a rate of about 20 gallons a second until they got to the surface. So. What, what's the noise that we hear right now? What is that's that? Air conditioning? Yeah, what that's, that? that's the, our blowers, so that yeah. brings fresh air into the boat. Oh, okay. And what's what's these things right here? These. This is, I think this is the snorkel exhaust. Main exhaust. Yeah, main, main exhaust, okay. Oh, okay. This Same is back there, there's another handle back there. These are the engines right in front of you. This yeah. is the exhaust. That, that actually is one of the pictures my father had with him on the album. This one? I believe so. It's silver one. So he would be in here too. This, this is his here. Right here. This is oh, it. This is so Because that was an engine man. So he'd be taking care of the engines. Yeah. There's one picture so both with his elbow on it. Yeah. You know? Wow. Great. Where are we? We're heading aft. aft. Just heading towards maneuvering. Okay. Good. Wow. Watch your step. What's that in there? Little electric. That's that's the electric bus. Wow. It's getting tighter. It's getting tighter, huh? <laughs> oh, so this that. is main propulsion control, right? So as I said earlier, the engines are connected to generators. The generators provide electrical power to either the batteries or or the motors. So this is how you control. A, where that electricity is going, either to the batteries or to the motors, based on where the bus switches are. Uh, the bus switches also control, so there's two motors below us. So if you divide it in kind of half, so this half controls this side of the boat, that half controls that side of the boat. So you have levers here that'll change the direction of the motor, either forward or stern. Uh, this here, I think this is the one that, that controls where the, uh, the, the power is coming from either batteries or straight from generators. Uh, this puts into this... Getting confused now. I did a video on this. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, this is where the power is going fr from, from generators to wherever. Then this is coming off batteries. This switches from battery power to generator power. So this is the so. actual part where they would uh, maneuver the ship? Yeah. So so these, these are your motor order telegraphs here. Hmm. So the arrows on the ins that arrow on the inside will move and that's someone up in the conning tower telling us go faster or slower. Right. And so, you know, we turn our arrow to line up so we acknowledge mm -hmm. the order and then we'll adjust. Would so his father be in this room? No. Let's say? He'd no, be in the engine room. He'd be in the engine room. This would be the domain of electricians. All right. So okay. machinist mate would be up in the engine spaces. Electricians would be back here. Was right. he an engine man or a uh, machinist mate? Benjamin. 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 Yeah. He was a fireman until, like, I think it said September 50th, and then he got promoted to EM3. Okay. Wow. This is the, what, the front, uh, what do they call them? This is the after Peter. So we're at the back end of the ship. Back end of the ship. And it's the actual real torpedo right here, right? Yes. Yeah. see inside? So you can see inside. This is the Mark 14. This is the steam driven torpedo. So you can see the turbine there. Steam turns that turbine there, which turns propellers back aft. Only problem with steam is it leaves exhaust. Now, is this the front of the torpedo? No. Nope. Yeah. The back, back end. end. That's the back end. Yeah. The front end is where the warhead is. That's your business. I remember when your dad right. burned his dolphins? He became qualified in every section of the boat. Right. So he may not necessarily know how to you know, fire the torpedo tubes, but he knows damage control in here damage control in every section. He was so, qualified in all aspects. Yes. That's what, that's what, that's what it means. That's, yes. that's what they wanted. In now, the bunk, why would the bunk be here? The guy would have to stay here at all times and sleep here? Yeah, you just got to sleep in here too. You could, yeah. same, same as the forward computer room, you got bunks. In case okay. they have to I've shoot a torpedo, he has to be I've right there. The right? guy who slept on that bunk, it was, he was on in, in 64 when they went up under the, uh, the Arctic Circle, went under the ice. Mm. And he just spooned, the, the motor there is for the cap snap on deck, he just spooned that to keep warm. That's what he said. I mean, you go up here? Yeah. Right, right here. This is a, that's an escape hatch, right? Yeah. That goes right to the water? The only, the only difference is this escape, for, so yeah. the one up forward you can you can use without having to flood the whole compartment. For this escape trunk you got to flood the whole compartment and then swim out. This whole one. Oh, wow. So that so right there would be the ocean. You had to close that right door there. there. Then you'd open that up, let it flood. Or you wouldn't flood from there. I think you'd probably flood the torpedo tubes. Yeah. Wow. This, this tells you how to do it. So if this ever flooded, it would still be operational if they, or the after the, they would drain it out, pump it out? 
right? No, if you're flooding this room that's to get it. out, then the boat's lost. That's yeah. it. So that's this. You're flooding. If you you can't save the boat, yeah. so you're saving yourself. Now, oh, there, all right. now so there have been submarines that have flooded and and sunk mm -hmm. and were raised and you know fixed up afterwards. Yeah. yeah. But because it's a piece of metal, if you can get yeah. to it, you can pull it back up. But crews never wanted to be on those. Those were uh, those boats had uh, gremlins. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, there was a there was a nuke boat that uh, mm -hmm. was in our squadron out in San Francisco. And she actually sank at the pier during an overhaul. Uh, they were they were moving water. They weren't paying attention. They were moving water to the forward tanks as they were pumping water out of the after tanks. And she just went like this. The forward <laughs> torpedo loading hatch went underwater. Right. And this and because it was an uh, yeah. an overhaul, there was a lot of electrical cables. Right. So they couldn't close any of the hatches. So if they wanted to, they couldn't even close that hatch. So, mm -hmm. uh, so she sank at the pier, and wow. uh, none of us would ever want to go go on her. <laughs> I do remember one that story. Was what, what, it was at Mare Island. Was no, but, but was it the boat? San Francisco? Uh, I don't think it. San Francisco. No, San has, Francisco's later. Yeah. Uh, it'll it'll there's, come there's, to there's me. There's some kind of ghost story about her, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah. I, 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 not to sidetrack. Oh, way. please. I, I do remember one story my father did tell me. He said mm. he was sleeping and um, he woke up and the whales would be in the water. And they would think that they're a whale with them. And they would make, you know, the sounds. And it's pretty interesting, as simple as it sounds, but even a whale in the water, and, and you hear the beauty of the whale next to like a submarine. It's like night and day. Yeah. You, you, you know, mm. it's just. Part yeah. of that whole his history. Yeah. Yeah. During the Falkland War, one of the Ar Argentinian boats had a British target and it fired a torpedo at long range and it heard it explode and then it heard the target head in a different direction. Uh, in hindsight, it sounds mm -hmm. like it actually sank a, a whale uh, because there was no British in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, we, we call that in the submarine community, they're called biologics. Uh, yeah. We tell kids it's one of your earliest memes. Mm -hmm. So look at it, you know, how the mm -hmm. chief pit officer always sees himself, you know, basically all kinds of chief pit officer from different perspectives, whoever's looking at it. But it's, you ever talk to like kids these days, they can do things kind of the same. But they all think that they invented it. Right. No, this has been here since the same right? So the, the actual. Uh Guys who were on the ship made those drawings, or yeah. oh. <laughs> little comedy going on. Yeah. There. Again, yeah. This is Mother's Eve. Nineteen twenty-year-old kids. They gotta do something. Yeah, you did. I mean, you were you were out 30, 45, 60 days on these boats, yeah. and. Uh, well, what was the war patrols in World War II? They were South 60s, South 60s. South 60s. Yeah. Uh, you had to do something. Mm. Which is why qualifying was so important, because it gave you something to do. Mm. And if your father left the Bakuna and went to another boat, mm. he would have to do a refresher qualification. But once again, it gave them something Well, I do. actually, it's ironic. I remember one, one ironic story get back to Calvin, the, the radio man. He had entered a, my father told me, he had entered a uh, contest, and uh, it was some sort of a radio contest or something like that. And once they came back to, to, to the base, it was a brand new car and a band playing for him. You know, for, for Calvin, because he won this, this car. My father and they, they thought it was a great. They they just were so flawed that it was it was unbelievable. You end up going to one of the bars, and they take your dolphins and drop it into a pitcher of beer, and you now have to dive for your dolphins and you chug the beer, and it's always a ceremony that I yet to know any submarine sailor that didn't have to do that. Wow. So. So what's this coin? He presented you this coin, right? Yeah, so or it's a medallion? It's, what a, is it it's a challenge coin. We, we, you know, they're they're a fun little thing in the military community. Firemen use them too. 
you know, police officers, that kind of stuff. It's just basically, you know, if you have one, whatever it represents, it expresses that you're part of that community. So, right. you know, you'll, you'll And they only made the like a hundred of those you had mentioned? We'll, yeah, we, so this is a special edition one that we minted last year for Bikuna's 75th commissioning anniversary. So these ones are fairly limited in number. It's presented to Al, Alan from you yeah, guys. Thank for, you. For thank, you. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you guys yeah, for your thank hospitality you. and graciously showing us the whole ship today. Uh, thank you very much. My pleasure.